Derek Wheatley and welcome to episode 215 of the Weekly Weekly Podcast. Thank you very much for joining us wherever you are doing so. Uh, thanks for listening to um, the last episode I did about me being grumpy. As uh, A lot of people agreed. Uh, it's disappointing. I number agreed that I was grumpy, but uh, I, I agreed at the end anyway, so it's all good. Um, obviously, I missed last week's uh, episode. I, I, I stopped it. Uh, sadly, uh, a dear friend of mine, Dara, passed away Um not unexpected, but a bit, a bit before um, his family thought it was going to happen. So a lot of us, uh, of of our friends, didn't get a chance to say goodbye. I met him when I was about eight or nine in Dublin, and uh, I went to ended up going to secondary school with him. And he, he, we all need this in school that we need to be dragged into a, a kind of a tribe or a circle, or else we kind of end up floating on the outside. And he, he brought me into the Rush Gang. I was I was from Swords. The school was in Swords, and he brought me into the Rush Gang, but. I was thinking about memories and I had this one in mind that that, that sticks out an awful lot. So uh, I was about 18 years of age and we were going to see the bootleg Beatles who were who were really big at the time with the with the Beatles kind of not so much a revival, but, you know, with Oasis and all that around. Uh, they were they were very big and they sold out the Point Depot. So me, Dara and my friend Welly were going to it. And before I got out to rush the lads, they had, I'm not going to say what they had done out there, but they'd enjoyed some, you know, stuff. And uh, so we were coming in on the bus and all that. And the two boys were buzzing and I was like trying to catch up. So anyway, From Me To You was playing. The Beatles, uh, they were playing the, the From Me To You. And everybody in the Point Depot was standing up. It was a, it was an all-seated gig, but everybody was standing up. And we were on the lower level. And <laughs> so that ends and yesterday begins. And everybody except Dara sits down. So he's kind of swaying and he's got this kind of like really delighted little grin on his face. And I like... I was kind of half embarrassed, but half like messing, trying to pull his sleeve down and say, come, would you sit down? Like, you know, and he was like, man, it's yesterday. And I thought to myself, like, that was a beautiful thing. And we laughed and we like, we had a great time. But I thought about it in the week and that, you know, the last few days. And I thought of it as a, as his way of, he has very laid back attitude and he, he did his own thing a lot of the time. And it was his way of kind of saying, like, I'm not going to kind of conform to what everybody else is doing, just sitting down. He was up there because yesterday it was yesterday by the Beatles. Like, why would you sit down? It's one of the most beautiful songs of all time. And I thought to myself, I'm going to take that from that memory. I have so many great memories of him, but I, I'll, I'll always take that. And um, yeah, so rest in peace, Dara. And he will be sorely, sorely missed. Um, it's hard to transition from that, obviously. But I'm very pleased. I think this is the perfect guest to come back, uh, you know, uh, to after a week off. We've had uh, this man on uh, twice, so it's his hat trick performance. We're getting the, so Calvin. We're going to send on the hat trick ball. Um, right. Calvin Doyle, uh, filmmaker, amongst many other things. Um, Calvin, thanks for coming back. How are you doing? Doing great. Doing really good. Really good. It's uh, it's lovely to, to see you. Lovely. Uh, so I, I I did say this before. I wanted to 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 say when you were on. So the quiz one, okay, that we did with the lads was the the twenty eighth of uh, July, twenty twenty one, which is kind of mad to think that it was that long ago. Yeah. But your one, which was actually episode six, um, was the eleventh of March, twenty twenty. So just over four wow. years ago. Can't believe it. Was that, that was like right at the start of COVID, was it? Or yeah, was it, it was just being the start. You were, actually, you were the last episode um, with a guest for about 20 after that. And then we got some, we're able to get some back in. Because you were actually in the room here with me. Yeah. After that one, you know, and I had the old equipment and everything like that. You know, it was really still rickety and everything, you know, and, and very unpolished. But it's just mad to think that it was just that long ago, you know. Amazing. It's what, still what? going yeah, but it's still going and like what has happened to you <laughs> what's happened to you since then? <laughs> Sum it up. Uh, loads, I guess. Uh I don't know, not much really. I guess had some kids and yeah. <laughs> uh then um started making films again mm. like maybe last April. And that's it really getting more back more uh more into art and writing and creating stuff and yeah. uh having fun doing it at a bit of an older age now. So it's like, uh, just feel it. I'm enjoying it a lot more. Now. Well, that's, that's kind of what I want to ask you because obviously it's a, it's an older age thing, but after having a couple of kids, like how does, you know, how do you look at the world and how do you look at creativity after having two kids? Um, uh, let me think. Um, 
<laughs> well, actually, uh, I, I kind of find, um, so I wasn't really doing anything, but I was, I work in a creative industry, mm-hmm. as they say, which is not really a creative industry at all. It's just okay. still work, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, but I, I thought I did, and I thought I was getting like a kind of the relief of being creative through that. And I had actually stopped like making films and writing things mm-hmm. because I just was like, I needed money or something. I was like, I don't have any money. And I kind of was getting sick of it. And so I was probably about 27 or eight, maybe. So let's say 2018. And, uh, and I kind of got, I, I don't know, I was doing so much of it that I was kind of losing sight of why I was doing it as well. I was kind of trying to maybe trying to get money out of doing it as well. And that kind of takes over anyway. But besides that, I had stopped doing it and focused on business. And then I had I had kids and everything. And actually, right, I actually think that Beatles documentary had a big part to play in it. And I watched really? it. And I was like, what am I doing? Like, look at these ads. This is brilliant. And like, yeah. I loved her. Like, like, I watched the whole thing and was like obsessed with it. And then I loved that they just were like, like, you know how much we put the Beatles on like a pedestal and mm-hmm. like they're like, like they just went in and just were like, oh well, let's you know play that one you have there and then they just yeah. start making one and, and like as much as brilliant as they are, like a, a big part of what I really love about them is their like their um, instinctiveness and their intuition with some and they didn't really think too much. No. Like they just were like, let's yeah, that that though. And then we we're all like, whoa, this is the best album ever. I always had this thing in my mind where it always had to be like really taught out for so much and really like, and I really disregarded like intuition and um, spontaneity, I guess, or just following your gut because uh, uh, that's what they were doing. And that anyway, that really inspired me. And then mm-hmm. another incident happened. Uh, this isn't really got to do with kids, right? It's all actually That's my right. answer. Yeah. <laughs> the kids didn't really do anything for me. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, I had another incident then in work one day and just some weird argument with someone. And I was like, oh my God, what is this? is my life. This is fucking crazy. I'm living in this weird like world where there's weird politics of like how the world works. Hey, that, they don't care about any yeah. of this. And then you kind of, you don't care about it. I was like, this is a really nice relief. Then I just started uh, doing stuff kind of aligned with what the Beatles are doing. Just like, in, yeah, you can instinctively write and stuff or just writing stuff off the top of my head, not really giving a shit where it came from. No motive with it. Like mm-hmm. at all. I didn't really care. And then I was really focused on not caring if anyone else liked it either. And man, then the feeling I got from it was just, I totally forgot. Like, it's like therapy yeah. or it's like I always saw a train. Like I used to think training and stuff got that too, but does it's there's something mm. else. It's like I'm off in this weird world or, uh, when I'm just coming up with things. And then when you're kind of following the flow yourself, you're surprising yourself. Mm. And it's really fun. It's just like, just lovely. Like, going, whoa, when you're just sitting down writing or coming up with some sort of idea for something. So, yeah. There's something very different about that, like looking at the Beatles documentary like that, because um, it's interesting to sit down. Now, I didn't look, we, you know, we all look at things differently and take things differently from it. And I thought it was amazing. And and I was looking back over our messages, actually. And uh, I saw that you had sent me a message about that Beatles doc in particular. And the idea of sitting down to to write a song, for instance, and um, just saying it's all right to go. G, C, D, back to G, go C. Because when you look at the, the documentary, a lot of it is that chord progression, you know, um, uh, very simple stuff. It, the idea of trying to sit down and write a day in the life is just ridiculous. Like, because John Lennon didn't go, I'm going to write a day in the life with all this orchestral, like, you know, uh, noise and everything in the background, because that's not the way we work, you know. So the way I, uh, like, in the last few months, I've had this kind of creative kind of overflow. So uh, literally every time I sit down and pick up the guitar, I'm writing a song like or the, a verse or you something. And then I'm like, like you said, there's this mad like headspace where you find yourself and you're like, this is unreal. That was there was nothing there. And now there is something there when you are sitting down like. Because I try to I try to say, well, I'll do it for I don't know if this is a good thing, but I think I do it for a half an hour or I'll do it for an hour and then I'll I'll get up 
rather than sit there for four hours and just start to, to be a lot of nonsense rather than kind of fine tuning it. Do you kind of work in that way? Yeah, yeah. Definitely. Yeah. yeah, I do. And but I used to not and I actually I love all the music that you're doing now as well. And that you're oh, putting thanks. out your music too. Yeah, yeah. It's just great, isn't yeah. it? It's good. <laughs> it's brilliant. No, I'm very but no, just to that I do do I do because uh, when I was younger, I would be reading all about the like tortured artists and like, mm-hmm. oh, you stay up all night doing it and that. But like, what happens is then it's then whatever the idea is becomes you're like, oh, that's not good now. Yeah. You know, after yeah. a certain while. But if you leave it and go away and then come back, you can see it, maybe it's done, or maybe some other weird meaning has come to it for mm-hmm. you that you can add something to it rather than like sitting there doing it because then like you said like you can start getting insecure and be like oh it's only yeah. gc and d yeah. i need to add in <laughs> so that looks stupid or so then yeah. weird stuff like that starts coming in so i think like the less i'm like kind of program like that so i think the less time not the less time spent but like the less time like really like uh thinking about it or, yeah. or anything like that is, is much better because it, i feel it just ruins it when you spend too much time mm-hmm. going back over or, or so i would do like maybe two hours or, or three hours yeah. max i'd say taking breaks as well i do like i do work i like take yeah. half hour bursts and then i take 10 minute break half hour 10 minute and sometimes it's just by the time that's over it's something completely different than it was meant to be what I love about like all your short films, because they're all so different in, in nature, but some of them start off clearly with, with a figure in mind. Um, There was one you did at The Rock, for instance, where clearly that was the starting point. Well, was that the start, starting point or was it something like that you went into the childhood and then went from there? Yeah, it's funny. Uh, the Rock one was like... Uh... So the, the whole thing with the YouTube thing is we're kind of using it as an experiment mm-hmm. of, I always have loads of these ideas. You're probably very same. Like I always had all these ideas for films, right? And things, but I, I was always like, I'd, uh, I'd have to turn them into a film now. Yeah. But then a lot, it's so many of them. I'm like, that's not really a film. Yeah. Like what that is, but it's still a good thing. And uh, I'm just kind of letting the, whatever that idea is be what lead the way. So like, Say with the rock one, like I literally was just sitting down because the rock has come back to wrestling, mm-hmm. right? And I used to love him when I was younger. And I was sitting down talking to Ali about it. And I was explaining to her the background of all this, try and make her really appreciate the video. I was just about sure, like on YouTube of the rock coming back, right? Was wor- you know, and you're like worried. Yeah. You, you need to know the history of her. Yeah, you have to know from the <laughs> beginnings. Like, yeah. And sometimes I, like, I wonder, does, does that actually ruin it? On the- it probably <laughs> does, yeah. <laughs> But I need to tell you. Yeah. And uh, but then I was like, this would be maybe just probably a good video to just make. So mm. then I just made made that then with that one, like and, and some of the other figures then as well. I just trying to a lot of the time um by making it, I've it kind of like but say writing it, I probably write it first. Mm. And then I will some sort of meaning comes out of it. But I literally right now you probably spend 10 minutes. You really don't go over writing too much. Well, that probably goes into what we were just saying, like, the, you know, to overthink something like that. If you're because you're talking about like a short film and a, a, something that you're kind of experimenting with, because like we'll talk about your other for, uh, short films in a bit. But, but the ideas of those are uh, would grab your attention because of uh, like a figure. Like if you talk about someone like Muhammad Ali or The Rock and the, these people who are greatly admired around the world. And I think I think what's interesting for me was to, to for The Rock one was probably because when I was growing up, my brothers were into wrestling. My younger brother in particular was very much into wrestling. And I remember The Rock, obviously, like it was hard to avoid it, even if we weren't into wrestling. But to hear you talk about someone like that and this person's coming back and it's still impactful on you, I think that's kind of mad the way it works that way. And it look, you can talk about the Beatles as well and all this kind of stuff. But this is a guy who was, you know, put his body through a lot and did a lot of stuff. Kit went off, made, you know, loads of money, did his acting and all the stuff he wanted to do, comes back and he still makes just as big as a as a mark as he did. But he let he obviously left a mark on you and you know, he's one of those cultural figures for people, I guess I was gonna say our age, that's a bit unfair on you. Um your yes, age. About the same. I'm getting there, we're grieving. But yeah, but that you know but, Yeah, but you know that idea of like people who leave these impressions of you and 
like you were saying, to talking to Ali, I talk to people about the Beatles all the time, trying to fill them in the whole history instead of just playing one of their songs. <laughs> just do that. But it's hard for you to, I think you, what I'm trying to say is you ca encapsulated in a in a, a small, like in a short film about how you felt about them really well. Yeah, and like one thing I I had to I have to really fight with doing with with those kind of ones is uh, over explaining because I don't I can't explain actually what that is like mm -hmm. what what it is to me through the video yeah but I used to try to do that and then I would ruin it and I'd never make it yeah but what I'm going to try to do now is allow for the fifty percent right I said like let's say if I make something it's fifty percent mine it's fifty percent yours then. Yeah. So like you can come up with the rest if you get not out of it or whatever you get out of it doesn't really matter anymore that's if it gets something it's kind of cool right so like yeah so like that's why like something like that is so impactful on me but I don't I can't actually properly mm. uh, explain what it is but like what I think sometimes is like let's say if your brother saw it he'd be like yeah yeah remember that and then he at least he'll go off into some weird yeah uh, uh, dimension for a few minutes for a minute maybe or a few seconds thinking about it because uh, I think that's what I can do I think yeah, yeah. but it's it, it like it's hard to think you know when you are young um, and you're taking all this kind of stuff in like whether it's you know sport or, or music or, or, or um, books whatever it might be cinema it's hard to kind of grasp onto these things for too long because you tend to about grow certain things, you know, like there's certain films that you might have loved when you're young and you put it on 20 years later and you're like, this is, oh, yeah. oh I, do you know what I actually put on the other day? And it was, I was disappointed. Um, I put on the burbs. Have you ever seen the burbs with Tom Hanks? I used to love that. Yeah. I used yeah, to love, I used so to did love I. that movie. And then I put it on. Not <laughs> it's not that good. Like, and it's, it's one of those things that kind of, sometimes you grasp onto things and you think, maybe it's better off being preserved like back then and I won't watch it again or I won't listen to it again. But for those kind of figures that you talk about, that is something that does like leave a mark. And like you say, you stick that in my brother's mind about The Rock. He'll go back and he'll remember The Rock as his hero when he was a kid growing up. And it's pretty special to kind of be reminded of that in in, in a kind of, um, uh, without having to go and watch a, a three hour documentary about him on Netflix. Yeah, yeah. Without, yeah, it's like, it's like, um, it's some sort of nostalgia thing mm. or, or uh, kind of a, like it. Cause I always say uh, some things like at certain really, really, uh, this only happens every now and then, but I might be walking along somewhere and then like for a split second, I'll get this mad nostalgic kind of rush mm. and it could be, I don't know. It's just weird. It could be, but it feels like I'm going back to being a kid. And when I started this, I was like, how would I make that like a thing? But yeah. like I, I can't, but like it's kind of got to do with that a little bit as well. You can do that with. I uh, when you when you say that though, like about you know having this nostalgic, it's like is this kind of a thing of you know be, being home, like being in on somewhere where you grew up? Is it not that it's so much deja deja vu, but like it's something that you will, uh, it, it'll click into your mind about nostalgia, or th can this happen like if you're knocking around Dublin city? Yeah, like. Uh, I did notice it kind of happened a little bit more since I was at home, but like, yeah. you transported back. But I do get something about Athlone then as well. I get like, yeah. you do it just kind of like things I like. It's like just yeah. nice times, I guess. Yeah. But like, what are like, what are those feelings? They're not really, they're like, it's so many things. It's like so yeah. much of a mixture of, it could be just that you had like, you know, a new rug. Remember that day we had the new rug down? Yeah. And then like, I'll go like, oh, well, like, I like to go like, well, what were we looking at when we had the new rug? Or yeah. What, what music was on? And, you know, like, so he's just kind yeah. of making something out of that then. It's like just kind of a fun thing, taking all the scenes. And then it, it's kind of like, I like the idea of it. Because um, I was looking, I re read David Lynch's book uh, as well. Mm hmm or why you got a camera what's it called now? something dreams room to yeah, dream something, something like yeah. that yeah and he's just talking about that the room to dream like yeah. just and using randomness randomness is okay to use because and my my uncle is talking to him about this as well he's an artist too uh he's a and he was just saying like you don't have to question all your ideas because they're in your brain so mm -hmm. your brain is a universe so it must make sense within that yeah and like so that means you can use anything together yeah. and it will make sense in some form and well, you don't even need to make sense of it. Maybe someone else will try and make sense of it. So, yeah, like if you can, if you put that into something like 
David Lynch's work. It's, you know, Mulholland Drive. People are still trying to dissect everything about that film. Like, and some of it will never make sense because it's what he imagined. And maybe it won't even make sense to him. That's the kind of beauty of it all, I think. Yeah, I you like, know? would think like a lot of his stuff probably doesn't, he probably doesn't even know what, like. Yeah. And that's cool. Put it in. Yeah, because because then you're kind of surprising yourself because you're like, wow, I meant something that I didn't even know. Yeah, I don't even know what it is. There's like mystery to, to it. Like, uh, but we we do, do you find though? Like I I don't know if I'd still do it, but I I used to think if I don't get this, I'm an idiot. Like if I don't figure this film out or this what this book means or or whatever it might be, I'm a, I'm a doll play. Yeah. Oh yeah, but and I you I actually though since I started doing this stuff again i had to work really hard now because that was like my downfall before mm -hmm. i came burnt myself out and i i was like writing films i was like why would just why would they walk to the door like why would this person get up off the chair and walk to the door they wouldn't yeah. do it or would they would they yeah. do that <laughs> and i'm like oh god it's gotten really bad like everything had to make sense and i had to make sense so that everyone else knew how smart i was at writing yeah. something and then what happens then is you make something that's so obvious, like it's yeah. not. There's no like you could guess what's going to happen because it's yeah. so complex. It's like when we obviously Lynch is still around, but someone like Yorgos Lanthimos, when you when you watch his films, it's like it's like this. So if you tell your actors like not to act, their reactions is all going to be different. Like so, Colin Farrell's going to be act a certain way, and and Nicole Kidman's going to act, and they'll they'll be kind of strange. But when you watch his films, like they're all odd as anything. Like, but there's something amazing in that because they are in themselves unique and even unique from each other. Like that, his films are so all over the place in the sense of ideas and and what he's trying to say. Um, and people will dismiss them and throw them away, and that's weird. It's crap like that. But but that's the whole point of what like art and creativity is, isn't it? It's like, we're, we're supposed to do like pushing boundaries. If we were all doing the same things, it would just be, you know, we'd all have given up a long time ago. Yeah. And he's a really good example of it because mm. like, um, the newest one, poor, poor things. Poor things. Yeah. Like to even see that be a mainstream piece is brilliant because yeah. it's fucking, it's really mad. It's crazy. <laughs> And like, like, because parts of it, I was looking at, I was like, is this even a film or what is this? Like, it's so <laughs> it's mad. It's brilliant. Mm -hmm. But to see that, like, you're getting mainstream, uh, really good reception, first mm -hmm. of all. And then, uh, re like, I imagine the actors really love it, mm -hmm. uh, working with them. But like, to see that kind of movie, it's really good and promising yeah. because, like, yeah, like, I, I, I think there's like two types of movies, right? There's the entertainment movies that we always like, just, just, whoa. Mm -hmm. And then yeah. there's movies like that that kind of make you want to create something yourself. Right? Exactly. Kind of like yeah. inspire you to be like, oh, that was really cool. That was yeah. I, I think like it's not since uh, since Lynch himself, like so Mulholland Drive was nominated for, for an Oscar that time. I don't think there has been anyone since him that has come along like Lanthimos has that has kind of disrupted the mainstream and kind of forced his way in because of the sheer like um bravado of what he does you know and that like 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 you mentioned about poor things so i i thought like i'd read poor things before i watched the film because i was thinking this is like it sounds bonkers whatever and i read the book and, and it, you know there's a lot of differences but at the same time it fits a, a novel bit more than it fits a film so you're kind of thinking now how is he going to manage to pull this off I, and he goes and does what he does, and you're just kind of blown away by the the audacity of a man to just because you talk about like these, yeah. it's one like because even the, obviously the 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 screenwriter is um um Tony McNamara, right? So he's he's obviously got like great visions and stuff as well. But even that, like when something for you, like if you're writing something on a page, when you're when you're uh, look, say even talking about your uh, short film scene, for instance, when you're writing or planning something out on a page like that. How close is it to the end, you know, product when it's actually on the film? Yeah, uh, I'm really bad at that. So it's like completely different. Okay. It's like totally different. Um, it'll be like just completely different. Like even see that one that you're talking about scene there, like that mm. had like a full narration that's meant to be over it. And uh, we filmed that like a long time ago and it's meant to be totally different. And then just the process is just, 
it was like just didn't really it just changed the whole yeah. thing and then i was like i was only after reading the david lynch book so we shot that back in 2018 maybe wow and there's meant to be a big narration over it and then i was looking back at it and he's like this is very over explained and then i was like ah well we just not put anything over it for the cracks he was like and then we we're like man looks okay like that kind of make you think maybe yeah <laughs> and then um and then Connor English is the uh, director of photography, and yeah. he's like really like um, it was really beautiful, uh, like shot the way yeah. it was shot. So I was like, well, I'll just do it like that. But but that is something that because I'm trying to write a feature, I'm going yeah. to write feature length film now, and I'm going to see if I can kind of <laughs> make it look uh, be more like the script. Okay. Because, Kind of like I like to go in and just be like, ah, sure, whatever happens here happens. Like, I don't want to get too in the way either of the actors. Like, let them kind of do their thing because. But is it more, um, is it f- maybe more fun for you to, obviously you want to write something down, you want your directions, but is it more fun for you to go in and then kind of think, well, maybe I'll just mix things up a little bit? Yeah, I think it is. And I think I actually am conscious of everyone else involved. Yeah the energy as well and like i i don't really have this really really str- i know it's probably a bad things have a really really strong vision that i'm like it must right. be like this yeah. either like i kind of trying to get an atmosphere maybe and uh sometimes if it doesn't really hit that but it hits something else i mean like, that's kind of nice too because yeah. the way it's saying now probably like i i'd imagine now with like a feature end you'd have to be more in line with that because anything else is i really create your kind of scenes maybe mm. You know, they're not really, even my short films weren't really short films either. Like, it's not like they were traditional, like, yeah. uh, you know, acts and things like that. They were kind of, I was just like, ah, let's do this. And then we're like, ah, that's a short film. There you go. And uh, yeah, so I think, no, but there was one or two of them were close. Well, the mm. one, there was one, I don't know if you've seen The Man With Dyed Hair. It's like yeah. The pub. That was like exactly like we had done it. Okay. Probably. But he made it way better than yeah he's a like he's a, a well i'm not sure if he's a trained actor but he's he's obviously recognizable i'd say i'd probably sound yeah. bad on on everybody else but like no, he, no, he'd yeah. have been seen before i guess in things you know we, we've been aware of him but yeah like when you i like do you know what the, the, I, I want to say something about connor english actually but you mentioned about the the photography and and uh that was something that really stood out for me in seeing like in in the use of the way or in the way he shot it and the use of light and stuff because it was really it was really interesting it's always interesting to see that and when you don't have to concentrate on dialogue you I saw that and then I noticed the music playing over it like who's the music by the music actually is from some place that we get music from oh is it had, yeah 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 and we just had liked it like it's good like, yeah I can't remember what it's called epidemic sound or something like that it's actually uh, quite nice. Yeah, yeah, so to get proper, there's obviously proper artists doing, but yeah, that was like, it was like, yeah, this is nice. I like this. So. Do you do you think of maybe throwing your own stuff on it? Because uh, people, I just want to mention, if if people haven't connected the dots here, the person I thank at the end of every episode, Calvin, is this Calvin, and he did some stuff. Uh, he did some for the intro of our uh, uh, podcast. You do, you obviously play guitar. You do synth stuff as well. Like, do you ever think of doing your own kind of stuff for it? Not really. No, okay. not really. I think it'd just be gone mad then. I don't, Too I don't much have for as you. much, yeah, because I don't have as much control over <laughs> music. music. Like, <laughs> <No>. <laughs> but I like that. We could go, you could go off on a mad one. Like, you know, that's like, and it, the only reason I thought that about like seeing that it could have possibly been yours is because it, it kind of, when you were, um, when I asked you to help out with it, and obviously I knew you were playing a bit of that, like, kind of music already. It was that kind of similar sound, but it's obviously something that you're drawn to anyway, so it, it makes sense. Yeah, no, 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 I didn't, uh, I didn't create anything for that one, but maybe, probably for the feature length, uh, there's a guy I you know that uh, did a really good sound, composed a really good soundtrack for one of Connor English's films, but I don't think any of it's out yet or anything. Right. But uh, he's from the Midlands and. Uh, yeah, he's, um, but I don't know what way it would work. I guess like a collection of music maybe as inspiration, but I'd probably leave that quite open too. That, know? yeah, I, like, because as like most people will know, it can make or break a film. I, I, and I shouldn't always reference this because it's a bit unfair, but I will. <laughs> but, um, 
So uh, the film Leaving Las Vegas with Nicolas Cage, uh, it's, a, it's a really good film, a really strong performance by Nicolas Cage, but the music is shite in it. It's <laughs> just, if you watch it again, Calvin, obviously, right? So, uh, like, honestly, it's one of those ones where every time there's a mu- there's a needle drop, it's the wrong choice of a song. Or every time he does it, like, I don't know if it's it Paul, Paul Vegas or something, whoever made it, but um, it just it just did not work. But then you'll have other ones where you'll have these moments of, of absolute perfection every time. This is, I'm talking about ones where you kind of have collections of music rather than like someone working on a soundtrack. But it can really make or break a film. And I suppose that's something you're you're already considering anyway. Oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, sure, it's nearly like 50% of the movie, right? Yes, I think. Yeah, because it's mood setting. Mood setting, it's so important. Uh, right? I like. I have trouble not having music throughout entire entirety of things. Like, I yeah, just yeah. love it. I just... Yeah. I mean, I, my one of my favorite things to do is you know like on Instagram if they put up something picking the music to yeah go with, I, just I love like, that oh, look at this oh it's so good but I, I did <laughs> do you do the thing where you try to link it to what's what's like happening in the photo yeah I, I, I do this thing where and I, I can't use it anymore but like anytime I'm showing myself in the in CrossFit and I'm doing anything with weights I always put carry that weight by the Beatles on <laughs> but I can't do it anymore because it's not even clever and then you do the weight by the band but this doesn't even work because it doesn't like say it in it but um, yeah I always try to match it up to what I'm actually doing in the in the photo but I do love that Like, and sometimes like you're in a real a certain I was in actually this is something I was in Um, I went to see The Smile last week you know and if people don't know The Smile is Johnny Greenwood Tom York and Tom Skinner but um, so I entered to see them and I I had I'd been at a concert a few months ago, but it was my at that time was my first concert in six years. I was just too anxious. It just it's not for me, so I decided to go to this one next. And I sat down and watched it. And like I had the the, the sad news kind of an hour before I left, but there was there's that kind of thing of music. Um, and this is this is kind of obviously in a concert setting, so it's you're you're right there. But it can make a difference in a film in this way as well. Where it can be so, like, it can just pull you in away from anything else that you're feeling like. So if you're feeling really down or you're feeling, even if you're feeling anxious in the moment, I got so drawn into some of those songs that I was almost waking up. I didn't really have that at a concert before. I'd always been more kind of, like, anxious or jumpy with the music or kind of, like, you know, ready to go. But for this, I was just, like, just drawn into it. And, like, that's what, like, and I'm sure you've had that experience plenty of times before in music. It's like, it's like no other kind of art form. So... Sticking it in a film, you just like don't just throw it out, just, just throw it in there and hope for the best. Oh, no, absolutely. And like, like you said, like you can get, like, I would probably res, I resonate with music more than I would with like actually watching films. Yeah. Maybe I think, like, uh, like I think they're my ultimate, uh, you know, like you said, where you get really drawn in. Yeah. And like, I don't know, it just can move you in a different way. I, I think it's, but yeah, like, even I was coming in the car here and I, the King Sunny Afternoon was playing. I was like, that'd be just great movie yeah. song like for some. Yeah. I don't know, but I don't know if it was ever in a movie, was it? Well, it probably was, but... It probably was, but like, you've stumped me on that one. I don't yeah. remember it. No, me neither. Yeah. I was like, that would be just great for something. <laughs> maybe they're just... Maybe they just don't like their own, their you know, their music in films. You know, it's one of those ones. Yeah. Although, although Strangers, which is my favorite King song, is in that one, uh, the Jarling Limited, the Wes Anderson film. Oh, and that's yeah, and I think dedicated follower fashions in some might that's be bound Juno to be in, or something like that. Yeah, I sp- look, that's bound to be in something. Uh, with a guy walking down like uh, yeah, one of those London, it. yeah, yeah, you know, in a suit, <laughs> it has to be in something like that. But yeah, like you're right, like, there's obviously. And that's that's a balancing act in itself, isn't it? Like to drop in a really obvious one at one point, or to make it more subtle or a less well known song, because it's like it's easy to go for those, um, you know, the big tunes, and then, you know, it works. But we've seen like other films before where there's been one that comes out of nowhere, and all of a sudden it's a really popular song again. Like it works for certain people. But um, when you were like, do you find yourself like putting yourself? under pressure when you're being creative do you think that's like something that do you have to take a step back when you start to feel like that yeah i do uh do that as well i had to like make a rules of it i was actually looking at your the way you've done everything on for what you're doing Mm -hmm. and i was like he just does it every week how does he do that i can never do that and he's like i'm gonna do that 
And then when I start doing it, he's like, "Oh no, I can't keep doing this. I'm going mental." <laughs> yeah, but I, but I I like this is the this has been the argument for the last well actually since episode two hundred when I had uh, a friend of the show Joanne on and she was talking about she was saying this is creative, and I was arguing back that it wasn't really creative, and we went back and forth anyway. But but my thing was like I'm having the guests on to talk about what they're into, what they love, and I'm getting like you know a buzz off that and we're getting conversation yeah. flowing back and forth. But then she mentioned that like, maybe it's not the creativity that you want, but it is creative. So maybe it's yeah. not quite reaching much. And then the music came along actually quite shortly after that. She started after that chat, I started kind of writing again, but it is one of those ones where it's, like this is what I like. I write down. I don't think I've asked you any of these questions, but but, but I, I write them down, and that and that's my kind of. Unless I have to read a book or like watch your film, so I was watching them anyway. But you know, it's kind of sometimes you will have to read a book or watch a film by someone or listen to it their album, and and then obviously that's a bit a big part of it. But I don't find it as creative in that way. So I don't think if you're to compare, you know, maybe making a film or or making some short films and stuff. I think that's a lot more tricky than what I'm doing. I, I, I understand like the consistency thing is important. You have to be doing it. It's like, like what you uh, train and we obviously both do jujitsu. The consistency is important because if you're not doing it, it's, you know yourself how quickly it is to get rusty with it. Like, oh, yeah, you're crap. <laughs> you're I actually, crap. We, we were only just talking about this today. Like, you know, and that's how I get hijacked with jujitsu here, but no, no. it's like belts don't really matter in jujitsu. It's actually how much someone trains. Yeah. Exactly. Like, just, we realize that now it's like you could have some white belt there's some white belts being trained there and like you're like oh my god what is going on with this lad and yeah. then there could be some purple belt that never comes and yeah. the white belt's better than the purple belt because but they don't they're mean just, they're not training and like yeah. someone has been five days a week then one has one once a month and it's but like, it, it's a it's a great like little look at life in in the smallest way of of the idea of and we can go back to it, like being creative and stuff with it. It 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 sounds like I if I heard say Joe Rogan saying, I'd be like, oh shut up. But it the consistency thing, it's just, that's what it's all about. Like it's like just being even and me and Josh talk about it all the time. Like we like sometimes we're like, I don't even like jujitsu anymore. I actually hate it. <laughs> you know, and you get to the point where you convince yourself that you hate it. But then you go back in the next day and maybe you don't like it that day, but the next day you go in and all of a sudden you've done something that you haven't done in a few months. Like you get a submission and you're like, oh yeah, that's, that's what I like about it. But it's not like, it's never going to be the same every time. And it's like when you're making something, not every uh, idea that you have is going to come to fruition. It's going to be maybe fall away and something, but something might come out of it. But it's like, just, you have to keep turning up and doing it, I suppose. Oh yeah, definitely. Like, and if you don't even have the consistency there, like you need what somewhat of a pressure to do it. It's just kind of yeah. find the balance, right? Of like, like what was happening when, with me is like, like quality was gone. Mm. Even recently, I tried to do a few quick ones. I'm not 100 happy with the quality of yeah. the ones that are, they are because I was like, I need to get them out now. <laughs> and uh, mm. but sometimes you just have to do that as well, like get get the thing out. So. Yeah. Like, but you need to have that like a little bit of a deadline too to be like, here, come on, because yeah, what I found especially with me is I just like you start like I'm doing other stuff instead of it then like that. I don't mm. even like it. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, that's like it's a, every, That's what I want to ask you about actually. Um, with the with the songs and uh, you know when I when I write it, I'm like. Right, that's the first draft, but I'm gonna put it out like, and I did that with one this morning. I just put it out and just you know to see and. There's a, it's it's like, obviously you with jujitsu you put yourself in the kind of deep end in a way, but you know what you're doing now. It's not like when you were like fresh on the mats, but when you're writing something, you have to. It's like I don't find this stuff as much pressure as I used to, but I'll find putting a song out or singing live on Instagram or doing something like that, pushing myself out of my comfort zone. That's like, like, it's kind of like what you're saying. You have to just sometimes put it out and like, you can always fix it and work on it, but just putting it out there is the hard part, I think. Oh, that's like the hardest thing of it. Yeah. It's the hardest thing because it's really good to like, like sometimes what's really good is if you put out something and obviously a lot of time positive feedback's very good. Mm -hmm. 
And you'd be surprised who you get the feedback off of. I'm sure you're always like, wow, wow. <laughs> I didn't think they would like that. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> yeah, and then they're like your biggest like supporters. It's yeah. really strange as well. Um, and then even putting something out that isn't really that good or something that or that no one even says anything or something. Yeah. And that's kind of good for you too, because it's like it's just like I don't know, it's getting rid of that thing of that everyone has to like the thing that you did. Yeah. Or, and even that everything has to be polished. Like I have, tr- I w- the music I find very hard because I'm not really that gifted at pol- getting things finished. Like I'm not. I yeah. like sometimes if I just play something on guitar, it sounds good. But then when I have to lay it down to try to record it properly, I can't do it at all. Like, yeah, yeah. It, that just sounded better. I just do that. But, yeah. But no, you're right, and it's a really hard thing to push stuff out. Like, and but it does become easier, like you said. Like the more you do stuff it just gets easier and easier because you're kind of, you're putting something out there that you made, but I think it's, it's cool to be able to like, you know, be like, it's just a song I made. It's like, yeah, me. you know, it's not. Yeah, me. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there's, there's uh, the whole kind of thing. I used to do this kind of, you know, I was so flippant, but it was very much what I see now as a kind of protective act where I'd be like, nobody cares anyway, just kind of do, do it. And, that to, to an extent was working at the time, but it's not necessarily always true because like you said, somebody, the most random person that your friends on Facebook will go, oh, that was, that was class. Like you I really enjoyed it. Like, do you write much? And then all of a sudden you're, like you said, they, they, they're kind of following you and, and really enjoying your music. And it means something to someone and someone might have really loved watching one of your shorts, but they don't want to comment on it. Like they don't want to be, you know, they, kind of putting themselves out there because people, don't want the someone else to come back and like be given out or something, you know, you never know. But I th- I think it's, it's important to just realize that people do care and people might care. And it's just, you know, it's, it's like you said, it's not your, you you're putting out there. It's just a song you wrote. Like it might be, even if it's about you or it might be about like a bloody duvet. It doesn't matter. Like I just looking at a duvet there. That's why you can't look at that. Uh, but, but I think, uh, you know, when you, so for you now to go from, what you what you've been doing into something as as big and and I suppose taxing as a as a feature film, um, what how's the process changed? So, um, it's kind of like helped, right? Okay, so doing those videos have really helped because I learned lots mm-hmm. of what works, what doesn't work, what kind of like what I like, what I don't like, and how you can, you know, even transition things in certain ways that are a bit different or what kind of music works or how you write them. So like a lot of the time last year, I don't know if I was talking to you about this, but I was like playing around with the randomness thing. I, I had made one video at the very start. It was like a vlog thing for someone mm. else. It was first studio, great my business, but then it was just a real mad kind of thing we met. I mean, and then it wasn't for that really, but, uh, but, it was uh, exploring like the randomness of things, right? And one thing was with George Harrison, and he did that with one of my guitar gently weeps, maybe I'm not mm-hmm. sure, right? So and then the idea everything's connected, yeah. And then David Lynch saw us doing that as well, so he's just connecting to do with them in this video, and um, and they're just saying like allow the randomness to take over people will make you'll make sense of what it is and that's the joy of it all right so that was like the what how i was writing the films all the films i'd be making most of them not all of them mm-hmm. some of them would be just something that coming on most of the time when it's about figure like a person they're just something that maybe i would have taught and just wrote down right uh but the ones that are, have more scenes in them maybe are just I have ideas for scenes or maybe ideas for something to talk about and I mix them together Mm -hmm. so it can go from one thing to the other and it just creates a kind of uh, interesting process that you wouldn't really be expecting. It's kind of fun, right, to Mm -hmm. do. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Like sometimes it might seem very like different, right? So it's like almost like it's a, well, one or two it might be look like a variety show thing, but some of them do work seamlessly. Yeah. So I was like, I'm going to just write the whole film like this, right? So I have like, I always had these ideas for like loads of different short films. Yeah. And I was like, I'm going to make another one now. But then I was like, I've made so many short films. Like I'm sick of making short films. Again, again like I'm 34 in May. Mm. 
So I was like, I need to make a film. Let's just make a film. So Connor English uh, sent me this video of one of them. God, I can't remember what his name is, but he's a director, filmmaker, but he's brother to brothers, not Coen brothers, but some other guys. It's not you know, like that the Russos are, or the Scott brothers are, I probably know them anyway. Probably Russos, maybe. Yeah. Anyway, they were saying they just get out, just first film, just make your first film. Just get short film, all the short films you have, all the ideas you have, put together, get a crew of people that you know can make a film, which mm. I'm lucky enough to know. Like, we could make a film. Like, I, there's a, a really good supportive system that we have, and like, you could make a film for basically nothing, really, oh, yeah. right? The guts of nothing. But maybe you save up a certain percentage to make the film and then tell everyone they'll get a percentage if we sell the film. Yeah. <laughs> which maybe, who knows? You never know. Uh, you never know. And uh, and uh, to have that and then just get the film out. So the process of writing it, actually, for the first time ever, I'm not daunted by it. It doesn't seem like I haven't basically laid out now. I just have to start writing the script. Of yeah. it, but I haven't like I know what's going on. The storyboard. The, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Kind of kind of right. But for the first time ever, it doesn't seem like what the hell, like, how am I going to make this thing about <laughs> for an hour and a half? Like, yeah. how the heck would I do this? Uh, it doesn't feel like that. I actually feel more excited about it. And I yeah. had to cut stuff out of it to make it. And uh, yeah, it's not daunting at all. And I think it's from making all those other ones. Yeah. And then obviously the, having, like the hard bit for me will be actually making it. Yeah. Like that will obviously be really hard. I don't know what that's going to be like, but I have the attitude that like just make it, get it done. Uh, if it, like you said before, even sticking things, if it changes along the way, I don't really, that's mm -hmm. okay. Like, and you know, if we have things that we can cut out to make it get it done, be open to doing that because, like, sure, we don't have any money. You can go and look yeah. at some money, grants and things for sure. Co any. Yeah, of course. And it, that's difficult in itself. It, it's, um, you said it was very important for you to do it in Port Arlington. Yeah, yeah. I wanted to do it like a round, like, I, okay. I'm not like, like there's actually one uh, there's a bit of bit of like what there's a couple of scenes that I have that in particular that I want to do in Hat Alone. Oh, okay. Uh but then I'm like, ah, will I be able to do that there? Would I have to get like the street clothes off? Yeah. No, so but then I was like, will I just do loads of the movie at night time? I think would yeah. be cool, really cool too. Um yeah, so in and around Port Athlone, Mullingar, maybe. In different areas around around there because there's weird cool places around like that you know you forget that they're so cool looking yeah like, uh, there's like an old roadhouse here along the road and i was like what is that like there and it's like something out of i don't know route 66 movie. is that the one you did you take a picture or was were you sorry in one of your shorts were you standing in front of it oh no no what's that's, that uh, is that uh, up on the stairs, was it? Or... Kind of, yeah, I think so. <laughs> that's so. It's a Catholic club. That's a weird too, that what right? That is? Yeah. Uh, but there's so many weird, cool places. Like, and, uh, like the the movie that I'm writing is like I don't really have a like a like a like a period that it's going to be in, okay. but I want to kind of blurred line, not blurred lines with it. But I've, like, I was like, it'd be cool if it was this time, but yeah. also maybe this time, but maybe it's just now. Who knows? So it's not going to be. Yeah, that like. Uh, do you know what I found weird about, I really liked uh, Saltburn, but I, I found weird about the setting being in 1998 or whatever it was, but like the clothes were, to, to me, clothes are incidental. I don't really care because I'm not into fashion or I don't like kind of notice. So they could have said it at any time. So yeah. it's a kind of a weird one that like, that it was there set in that particular time. The clothes were a little bit baggier than they are today. And and then it was all of a sudden that was going to make it 1998. But I like the idea of that, like the blurring of what, what you're talking about, the kind of blurring of, of, of lines. Yeah, because like, you know, like uh, I remember like when I was like, I don't know, in my early 20s, I went through a period of like, I love Chet Baker. And I was okay. like, trying to dress like Chet Baker all the time. So like if someone sees a picture of me back then, they'd be like, when, fuck, when was this? What was this lad doing? Going to yeah. wear a suit or something? Time traveler. Weird. <laughs> it's just so weird. So, like, I was like, we well, bring that energy into it. Like, yeah. You know? And actually, there's a funny thing you talked about with uh, the burbs, right? Yeah. Um, I was, I have a thing written down. I'm like, I loved in the burbs, you know, um, the, one of the Corys. He's in it, right? Yeah. Corey? Yeah. Corey Feldman. Yeah. Yeah. Feldman. Yeah. And, but they're watching everything. Yeah. 
I just love that. Yeah. Like they're watching the stuff go on. Yeah. And I, I remember when I was younger, um, we would actually stay up and watch wrestling. I was in a housing estate and there used to be every now and then in a in a community center down like in the town, there's no nightclub. So the community center, like once a year, would have a adult like nightclub thing yeah. going on. But everyone would travel through the housing estate to go to it. Oh. We were up on a bank holiday Sunday watching wrestling and we'd just be out the window looking at it. people would be like arguing and like, you know, yeah. it's just so brilliant. And I was yeah. like, I'd love to have something like where they're just watching everything yeah. happening. It's so cool. Like, oh, it's, that it's you weird. know what? That's probably the after watching it recently, it's probably the 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 best thing, the best part of it <laughs> is the fact that he's like bringing over people for a party and it's so visible that they're having a party but nobody's <laughs> really interacting with them like every so often Bruce Dern's character goes yeah I get off the porch whatever but everybody else is just kind of going about their business and they're like having a proper party on the roof and like and it's 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 a weird little thing it almost feels like it was like stuck on at the end we'll, yeah. we'll, we'll have like this little punk kind of character in there with his girlfriend and all these people partying but yeah I know what you mean like because I think we've all kind of had that experience where there's there's been something going on and we've been able to kind of like you know nothing illegal by the way just you know anything everything above board but we've always kind of been uh, we've had that kind of curiosity and the nosiness to kind of get involved in that stuff and i think that's like i kind of like that you know um, i love it i used to yeah. love that I mean, so, because i was always younger as so, well like a lot of people that we hung around were older than us so they mm-hmm. drink they'd be drinking but we wouldn't be drinking and then they Mad, you know, like when kids, like teenagers, drink mad stuff behind, yeah. them. and we'd be just sitting there watching it all, <laughs> laughing. What's going on? Like, <laughs> what are they doing? <laughs> They're already acting like that. It's so strange. Yeah, I, I, I remember that too. Until you get involved, and then you're like, no, I understand it. I know. Um, <laughs> when you're obviously you mentioned someone like David Lynch, like who else would you have been your or who are your kind of movie um influences? Mm, movie influences. A tricky one, yeah. Tricky one. I'm good for those. I always throw a few, I always throw a few like curveballs in the end just to see, yeah, yeah, stump me, yeah, see what's happening. Uh, I always really like, I really liked one car wise films when I was younger. They're really like, I just thought they were so cool as well, yeah. Well, they're very like the visual aspect of it, yeah, it's like very atmospheric, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like, you don't really know what they are even about. Is that they're they're one of them as they're hard to describe, like. It's yeah. just about these two people, <laughs> like, yeah. but it's just like there's. Uh, I really like like the boldness mm. of those movies, uh, uh, and um, I like uh, how vivid they are. You know, like certain weird scenes, and and uh, with them as well, music like talk yeah. one that's uh, Chungking Express with mm-hmm. um, what is it? Cranberries dream, yeah, is it dream? dreams, yeah, yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, um, use of a song and that because there you go. Uh, yeah, it's just unreal. It is, and it's a really well done scene as well. I think like there's just a woman playing around with yeah. a Thai airplane or something. Yeah, that's amazing. And then it comes in again, but it's just so like. But that's that's what's like, um, with his like those films to me. There's there's something about the color used or the tint used or whatever it is. Um, I don't mean to go always go on about like my color deficiencies or whatever when I look at things, but um, I wonder. Do you ever sit there and go, is everybody else seeing this color that I'm seeing? Or anybody else, do you know, seeing those, those those matching or if those colors are clashing or if they're perfectly normal for people? And I always feel that and like his films kind of stand out for me for that reason. A couple of them in particular stand out for me for that reason as being like so bold in what the, co- the color choices. Yeah, no, absolutely. It's like that really like uh, they're really saturated. Sort yeah. Of like uh uh, like film, they're on, yeah, uh, they're old, film, right? yeah, the yeah, proper yeah, film, yeah, it's yeah. lovely, like, uh, like really, like, uh, fil- like the like them, you know, the filters you can put on yeah. now, but they're like really, like, uh, yeah, like so- they had to work for them then almost, you know, more yeah. so than they would now because obviously you can do them on, you know, on a computer now, I guess, you know, yeah. it's not, it's not the same, but, but yeah, that like. That's a that's a really the, the, the kind of left field one, and that's it's a good one because I don't think that you know that particular filmmakers come up on on the podcast before so i always like when these things come up and people go i might go and check out you know that, that's what it's all about really you yeah know? absolutely like if anyone wants to watch the chungking express is yeah the first one but i think in the mood for love is the best one in mood for love is the best one yeah, yeah just about he, two people just amazing 
It's amazing. And like, it's sometimes in that one, like, I don't, won't, won't obviously give it away, but I'm yeah. like, where, who is this? Like, you know what, when you're watching that one, sometimes you don't know who is, you're like, is that, who is yeah. that? Yeah, it, it, the kind of you don't you're like is that the hat one or is it? They is blur the lines a little yeah, bit. Or something. it's so cool. It yeah, is. and it's it's. I don't know where that comes from in the sense of like confidence or um, there's bravery to that. Like because then you you're gonna lose people. Like that's you know that's the nature of the beast to get anyway. You know with art, but I think with films people are just thinking ah oh, this is up its own arse, so I'm not gonna bother. Like it's trying to confuse me, where it's not literally trying to confuse you like it's just trying to make you think a bit more that's all yeah just and relax if, and if you stick with it then it's yeah. really like impactful the more it goes into mm. it it's really you're dragged right in oh it. Keep, you're in the relationship yeah. all of a sudden and then i i didn't see it uh until about a year ago i got it on a like well you know the criterion blu-ray oh, yeah. thing i was like i'll get this now because this is like this is uh, considered a classic and stuff and um yeah, uh, that's what I remember mostly. For, obviously, from from the relationship aspect, but the colors and the way he uses the camera around people, almost peeping around corners and stuff. You're like, yeah. this is just a some sort of alien making this. And the music as well, especially in, in the mood for love, they have like a soundtrack, right? It's yeah, like, yeah. And keep playing it over. It's, it's over so and good. over. Yeah, and that's that's like a kind of um, uh, again like a, a brave choice. But when the piece is that good it's like well why not you know it's you know when johnny greenwood writes uh you know uh, there will be bloods soundtrack you're like well, yeah fair enough just keep playing it like it's it's beautiful yeah but they that they, like also like they, that's another film like uh there will be blood as well like like i know it's not in the same thing as poor things but that's another one of those movies that makes you kind of go like that's cool because it's cool to do something yeah you know, like, or, or even, I don't know, just the way this is made is so cool. Like, right. It's like, or even, I don't know if even it's a story. I think maybe it's just Daniel Day-Lewis in, in that or something, the character. Yeah. Like, I don't know. Like, they just, is very inspiring. I find like, like, it's not like sometimes when I watch them, I don't necessarily get an entertainment value of it. Yeah. Just like, whoa. What? Like, <laughs> even, um. you know, Paris, Texas, like, mm. like a lot of people, I know it's kind of stereotypical. A hipster movie now yeah right? but, but like, yeah when i was re- when i was really young my uncle gave me a dvd of that and i was like you know that like i was like what the fuck is this and then but you know that scene when he's talking to her through the window oh god i, like, I know these people the, and then right is it right cooter yeah right cooter yeah yeah amazing oh, man that, like that just that scene yeah. i used to get, when i was younger i'd get drunk and just like put that on youtube and watch it like you know and say, like, <laughs> but I, that that's i brought the i that's mad that you mentioned it because i brought it up a while back on this and i can't remember who i was talking to but um that that talking through the glass and he's sitting not and he's not facing her at, at some point and um just uh her face is like and this this is i'm not like you know but she's perfection in that picture and he's just like this guy that you've you've followed him through the film and um, I think uh, it's interesting when she said about there will be blood about it not being like entertainment factor and I, I'd say Paris Texas like falls under that category where, oh, but yeah. it's also like you follow this guy on because you're like he walked out of the desert and now he's not talking like what could have happened to this dude like it's you know like because because you just don't know when you're young and you're watching you're like thinking he could have been abducted by aliens like it's an American film you don't know they would throw something in like that and I I wanted to like mention about there will be blood. There's the, the first twenty five minutes be, of it being basically a silent film of of Daniel DeLeo's trying to you know find oil and breaking his leg and all this kind of stuff. That in itself is so brave, like because you're just kind of going. For some people, again, would be like, "Well, why is no one talking? Like, what's going on? It's just yeah. this guy going around in the in the you know out in the des- desert, like falling down a hole." Because people do think like that. They'll just disregard it but to me it's like top three films of all time so oh yeah there you go and like the thing is i think with that as well as like there would be a very brave because like if you think about the board of producers and that they'd be yeah. going mental over yeah. that like no one's gonna watch this statistic yeah. show if you don't say something in the yeah. first two seconds you know like to do i say you had to they were probably like this not gonna do well with it that one because yeah <laughs> I also think that something like that might have happened with Saltburn, you know, like at the end of it. Mm. And like the producers definitely were like, 
we're not doing this film unless you tell everyone what uh, happened. Yeah, you know, that bit, that, like, that's in that's a good. I didn't think of it in that sense. Yeah. I did hear people complaining about the fact it was all explained at the end. Yeah, that's well, the I only thing I had. I, yeah. I was like, just you didn't really need to do that. I, I didn't really have a problem with because I really enjoyed the film. Yeah, I, I did the too. Film yeah. was good. Yeah, but I just at that bit, I was like, I know why this happened because <laughs> they, like, they definitely made them do that. Like, just oh, definitely, I know they did. That the the, the the um uh, the there's a bit in that where uh, he rips the 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 tube out of her mouth out of her throat that's i don't care about the bat scene i it made no uh, mark on me in a sense i felt sick or anything but when he did that with the t- with the thing just whipped it out of her that to me was like oh i'm not, oh, not i thought i was nearly gone because i just <laughs> oh god it's it's horrible um uh so is it difficult uh to to balance something like being creative and and, and having a, an actual family to to manage <laughs> No, it is. It is yeah. actually just getting time to do it. Like, um, and then you have to just do work, stupid work. So stupid I'll, work in the middle of it. Have yeah. to do that crap. Uh, no, it is. And even recent, like I sometimes, uh, well, like that's why doing something like this, actually, just talking on podcast is very good because, like, we were having, like you were saying earlier, it's not necessarily creative, and I probably would agree with you to a certain mm-hmm. extent because. Like you, if you didn't write music, I would say, I know it is creative, but you already know because you write music. There's a really big difference between creating something like yeah. that towards this. Well, what this is like is they like create uh, fuel, right? Like, yeah, we are, you're getting like to talk to people once a week, every week. And it, it's just, there's something about that that just makes you want to do the stuff more. And if you mm. weren't doing that, you probably wouldn't do and he, you know, you know yeah, I agree. There, no, I'm not doing that. No, just watch something and leave or go on yeah. the phone. It's and it's I, interesting that that kind of thing of 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 just talking to people. Um, right, it's different talking to you because we t- were like literally talking about creativity. But I talked to a, a makeup artist recently who'll be coming on, and uh, it was like. I didn't know what I was talking about because, you know, but I wanted to talk to a makeup artist and all of a sudden she opened up this kind of idea of how she used to paint when she was a kid. And when she became, she she was in her thirties before she decided to become a makeup artist. But then she realized that it was just like painting and it was just pa- painting people's faces and making them smile for their wedding or their, the hen night or whatever it is. And it just like, it flipped, flipped my head because I'd never, I didn't think of it in that way. And all of a sudden it was like, sure, that's to her is as creative as anything I'm doing or you're doing or whatever. And that's, there's a joy in that for her. And I like, I was like, that's mad. Yeah, no, I actually totally, because that the reason I was saying that this probably isn't uh, as creative is because I, so you were, I knew you write as well and you mm-hmm. uh, write music, right? So I know that your output from that is your, creative release right so you yeah. get that little feeling and but that's the same as like what that woman does yeah or anyone does it's like i think the whole idea of doing something like art uh is the output that you get the, the release yeah so if you it doesn't matter what you're doing but if you get that release where you're kind of gone into some other dimension i think that's nice like yeah you're, you're gone like disappearing uh or getting lost in it um, and then even the satisfaction of, I don't know, even know if it's satisfaction, right? But maybe I find this the release. The, 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 yeah, the it's, thing. it is. That's it, it is a release. But I do think if you, f- especially if you finish something, and obviously the satisfaction is there with finishing something, but it is like it's a pretty special thing to have. Just it, speaking from from myself. Um, to have a finished song that you're happy with, like because it's always going to be there, and you've created it, and you can any every so often someone oh you play music to you and you're like, well I can I can show you a song if you want, and then you put it on or you you play it for them or whatever, and then it's just you did that like it's still kind of there is something like it sounds as corny as anything, but there's still something kind of magical about something like that. Yeah, but like. Like to be like, uh, if I let's say if I make him like every now and then I go back and look at the movie and go, Wow, yeah, oh, whoa, and I watch my own thing, right? yeah, yeah, but just because yeah. you made it, like, as long yeah. as you like what it is, 
<laughs> and same like if I ever did songs or I'm sure you look at stuff like and this thing you never tell anyone but like no like, of course back to London and going oh yeah I'm good I love that bit there yeah. oh it's so weird but it it's is you, it's something that you love so much and it's totally yeah. coming out of your brain and you're like oh wow that, that turned out really well didn't it yeah that that's that's a that's an interesting way to think of it because obviously we all do it with with the stuff we created but we do go back and go god the bridge in that song is class but like of course it is because when you wrote it and you finished it you were like i really like that i like that that's and it great. might it might age even better and that's the the fun thing about like films and all that you know um if people want to if people want to watch your uh short films where where can they where can they do that oh yeah so that is all mostly on just on YouTube, really. YouTube. I think you can keep it all on YouTube. So it's, yeah. Calvin, I think it's under Calvin Doyle, Calvin Doyle Films. Yeah. D O I L E. My Midlands accent, my Port Arthur accent it sounds like D I A L something. Yeah. No, no, we, we get it. We're, we get not, it. a lot of us are Irish, I suppose, listening to us. So we'll get the Doyle part. But uh, yeah, I, I, like I said, obviously, I love them and I watch them every time they come out. And I think there's always something interesting, whether it's about yourself or your ideas or or about, you know, figures that you admire. And I think that's like, it's great to dip into the mind of of an artist, I think. Yeah, oh, thanks. That's good. That's all right. I enjoy it. And uh, uh, I also love all this stuff. So yeah, good. good well, thank you very much. Stuff. Thank you very much. Listen, stick with me for a second there, Calvin. I'll close this out. All right. Um, obviously, I want to thank uh, John Francis. Uh, for doing the tech stuff. Um, I always thank my mom and dad, uh, granddad, Jer and Calvin. Uh, we're on YouTube, so subscribe if you would. Um, subscribe to Calvin, obviously, as well. We're on Instagram, Facebook, X, and then all the usual uh, podcast platforms as well. Um, so thanks, everyone, for watching or listening today. And once again, uh, Calvin, thanks a lot. Thank you, Derek. A pleasure as always. Thank you. And everybody else, we'll see you next week. Bye. 